don't have any update for you right now. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just an ongoing process right now. And, and certainly when I have and we have more information, we'll let you know. But there's really nothing I can talk about at this point. Um, would you say you're optimistic, just your gut feeling, um, that he will be back at some point this year? I mean, I just know that it's going on right now, and we're going to prepare for him uh, to be back this week. And um, you know, he'll practice this week. And uh, once uh, we find out more information, we'll go from there. Third row left, uh, Dan. Brian, uh, Devon Hamilton is a guy who's been a champion in every game for you guys. How big has he been stepping up on that defensive line and becoming a leader for the defense? Yeah, huge, huge. You know, that's. Um, there's two parts of the D line. Obviously, there's the inside guys, and then and then the ends. And uh, he's really solidified the inside for us this year. Uh, started with his off season, and now he's producing at a high level. And um, to see him, you know, get some sacks and actually affect the pass game as much as he has, that's been a huge deal for our defense. When you go into a game, and you don't have Chase and Jonathan Cooper, two captains. Is he kind of a guy who steps up and becomes the leader of that group? He has been, yeah. And he's um, he's not a real vocal guy, but. Um, he leads by example and sets a standard by the way he's um, gone about his business. And he has the respect of his teammates. Uh, you know, those guys know that he's been here for a while and put in his work. And the way he's gone about his business has been excellent. Uh, and now to see him producing it at such a high level, it's just a great testament to him and, and uh, the development of our program. Yeah, uh, two things quick, Ryan. Uh, uh, I don't know if proud's the right word, but to watch, I'm sure you watched that LSU Alabama game or some of it. How proud are you of, of watching Joey Burrow the way he's flourished, et cetera? Yeah, no, proud is proud is definitely a word. Uh, really happy for him and seeing the way he's playing and competing. Uh, he is a tremendous competitor, and uh, watching him go into Alabama and win like that was really cool. And you know, <coughs> Coach Meyer told us one point: you, you and him sat around after, after that spring, and, and it was really close mm -hmm. between those guys. How tough is it in these days to watch a guy that's that close walk out the door? It's hard, but it's it's being at Ohio State. You know, I mean, you think about that room. You had JT, you had uh, Dwayne, and you had Joe. You know, uh, one is one of the more decorated players in, in the history of the Big Ten. The other guy's playing in the NFL, and the other one's, uh, you know, probably leader for the Heisman right now. And uh, so, you know, they all can't play. That's the thing about being a quarterback, and that's what's hard and sensitive about college football right now is, is that very situation. Um, but uh, it all works out in the end. You know, we got a, a great quarterback we feel good about right now who's playing at a high level, but – I think that's just part of um, you know the culture right now, or just the environment of college football, and certainly quarterback play. Ricky, uh, what did what did last week's game tell you about the focus of this team? There was a distraction, uh, prohibitive favorite against a team, and y'all came out. Is does that give you even more confidence going into this week? There won't be an overlook. I mean, how do you how do you play that? We talked about it all week, and, and when uh, the team was aware of the situation, they knew that this was the first time we had, we had faced some adversity, and uh, we know that adversity's, uh, there's more adversity coming along the way. We don't know where, we don't know when, but uh, we talked to the team about that from early on, that uh, we were going to uh, equip ourselves to be ready for any adversity that might hit us. Uh, that's just the way these seasons go, and uh, championship teams, they're, they're resilient in times of adversity, and it reveals your character. And so, um, you know, the coaching staff, we relate to the, to the team and to the program that our character was at the forefront. You know, the, the, the heart of this team is, is being showcased today to find out what we're really made of. And I think they took that to heart and, and uh, you know, they played hard throughout the game. Rob, you've been around a lot of teams. What would you define as the it factor for a team that's, that this, seem, this team seems to have it? What is it? What are you looking for? What defines it? I don't know yet. I think, again, some of these things are things that we'll probably go back in February and sit down and, uh, you know, talk about over dinner or something like that. I, I think when you're in the middle of it right now, what you try to do is you try to forecast, you know, what's coming here. And one of the things we have got to do is we have to hold ourselves to a certain standard and that, um, you know, we, we cannot at any point, you know, lose our discipline, lose our focus because, you know, like we had 13 penalties in a game. That's unacceptable. You know, that's going to hurt us in a close game. And um, execution level has got to be at an all-time high in the effort and all those things. And taking care of the ball, ball security, decision making, communication, all, all of those things have got to be really good, um, you know, if we're going to win close games. And so, you know, our team hasn't really been in the fourth quarter of a dogfight yet. And so those are the things that we're really focusing on right now. But, but to answer your, your question, I think we'll know more of that at the end. Uh, the one thing that I know that I, I love about this team is the chemistry and the maturity. Practice that. You just talked, you haven't had a fourth quarter game. 
you had some adversity in game versus Wisconsin, but is it just are you wondering yourself how are we going to do when we need you know it's third and seven and we need it and we're behind if that if that moment comes do you need to practice it? Yeah, not not worrying about it, just uh, preparing for it and making sure that we're constantly talking about it, what it means, and practicing at a high level and. And then at the end of the day, you're just going to trust your training. And then uh, when you're in that moment, you'll just go back to the way you've trained, the way you've prepared. And if you haven't done that the right way, then, then you won't execute the way you're supposed to. I think to our team's credit right now, they have prepared um, and they've executed at a high level in, in a lot of areas. And so that's, that's good. But now we can't ever lose focus of that because that's when you get yourself uh, in trouble. So uh, that's the message this week. Um, you know, Justin Fields a couple times in his high school career had season-ending injuries, obviously went through a lot of stuff last year at Georgia. It's like when you're evaluating quarterbacks as you're bringing them in beyond X's and O's stuff, do you look for things like that, like they, that they've proven themselves in adverse situations like that? There is a lot of things, especially with a quarterback, that you try to dive into. Uh, I don't think you really know until you get them, though. And you try to do the best you can to ask the coaches in the area, to ask the people in the school and find out the most you can about the individual because uh, all those things are, are tested, especially uh, when you get in November. Um, so yeah, I mean, you got the talent is one thing, but being able to work through adversity and uh, being consistent and making sure that you're tough enough. I mean, one of the hardest things about being a quarterback at the highest level, whether it's the NFL or where we're at, is the, the amount of meeting time. You know, I mean, we have to spend so much time in, in the meeting room and watching film week in and week out. There's, there's more time in the meeting room than there actually is in the field. And that, that takes discipline and that takes toughness too to make sure you're doing that because um, you know the immature, the, the weak-minded, they, they start to take weeks off because it gets too much for them. And so uh, those are all things that we want to make sure we have grinders at quarterback. Has this defensive performance helped him by just kind of giving, letting him ease into things? Well, I, don't, I don't think he's eased into anything. I think that he's you know approached every game and every snap the right way, but uh, it is good to have a defense as strong as ours is so that we get the ball back, you know, like in the first half of that Michigan State game, you know, uh, maybe we weren't clicking on all cylinders, but the defense got us some turnovers early and the more at bats we get, the better. But, but we also need to understand that, you know, there's going to be times where, you know, we're not going to have that luxury. So, uh, but those are all things we talk about. Uh, lastly, um, what ways have you seen Jeff Okuda's presence on the field affect the way teams are attacking you in the passing game? Well, I think that uh, he doesn't get a ton of action over there because, um, you know, he's so good at what he does and he covers guys and, um, you know, there's not a lot of room over there to throw it. And so I think that that maybe affects, you know, where teams are going. If it's uh, if it's zone coverage, typically quarterback will just go where the zone tells him to go. Uh, but if it is man to man, you know, most reads are matchup based. So, you know, they have to decide if that's a matchup they like or not. Ryan, what did you think of uh, chugging off on Saturday? You know, I thought he, I thought he started out um, okay. We get that delay game. You know, I got it in late, but he's got to help me with that and get the thing off. Um, and then we had the sack fumble. But then after that, I thought he settled down and played good. Um, you know, got the ball out of his hand quick, threw some nice balls, made some good decisions. Um, you know, he's a guy who's been around a lot of football. He's very smart. He's uh, he's a guy you can count on. You know what I mean? Just to uh, understand what's going on, and, and uh, he throws a good ball. I mean, you know, he's got good touch. And uh, he's very intelligent. So, I mean, he can handle a lot without getting a ton of reps, and that's, that's hard to do. And I think the good thing, he's played a decent amount of football this year, which is good. I don't know how many attempts he has, but he's, when he's gone in there, I think he's competed and done well. I know you like to say you don't have expectations or surprises, but when he got here, you know, at least for me, I, don't think, I never thought we'd see him play much for Ohio State. I mean, how far has he come? And I know circumstances changed this, but did you envision that he could be doing what he's doing right now? Yeah, again, I, I didn't know, but that was a very unique situation. And to, to see where he's come, I, I understand your point. I think that he's come a long way. And, uh, you know, he came in in not great shape. Uh, he'll tell you that. And he kind of changed his body in the off season and put a lot more work in. And, um, you know, he's, he's in his second year in the program, which, um, you know, we haven't had a lot of those guys, you know, just be, be, by the way of the situation at quarterback. And so when you're second year into the program, whether it's physically or mentally or understanding the scheme of the offense, it really helps you. And I think you can see him, you know, when he is out there, he's pretty decisive in his, in his uh, you know, where he's throwing the ball and his protection and everything. Has your comfort level, level changed if, just, if something happened to Justin from, what, from where you were in August till now? Oh, I think there's a body of work there that, that's being built. So the more he's out there, the better you feel. Ryan, uh, I know throughout the year you, you have to sort of adapt your offense as things get put on field and on film and teams try to defend you. 
whether that's you know, <coughs> building off plays or, or installing new ones totally. Um, what do you and the staff need to see from your guys before you're ready to put new stuff on the field on a Saturday? Well, it, it, there's, I think there's a good balance right there of finding the right things that you know, your guys do well and then also you know, putting wrinkles in there. But uh, we have to be able to execute at a high level in practice or else it's not going to get called. Even if it's on the call sheet, um, you know, if we don't feel great as a staff about the execution of it, we won't do it. We'll just run another play that we feel better about uh, again until maybe, maybe the next week it's ready to go. Um, but a great example of that was probably the play we used in the Michigan State game to Ben, ben Vick. Uh, that was a play we've been working on for probably four weeks. It just wasn't right. It just wasn't right. And at that moment, it was right, and we executed it. There's been other times where we've run plays that it wasn't quite ready yet, you know, and probably could have used another a week of work. And, um, you know, and those are typically specials, which if a team sees it, they kind of recognize it um, pretty quickly. But then there's also the base plays. Those are plays you just carry week in and week out. It seems like uh, for, the, for the most part, like wider zone runs or I don't know if you call them mid zone or, or outside zone, whatever, have become more maybe of your base run play than, than tight zone would be. Is that because of there, is there anything about JK that makes them better than that or your offensive line that makes them better at that point? Why has that sort of come to the forefront as your, as your go to run play? Uh, it just, it's been um, you know, something that we've worked on. We want to have some versatility in the run game and uh, it's something we've kind of added here in the last year or so, year and a half. Um, and uh, it's it's been working well, uh, but it, it's just part of the run game. You know, we have a lot of things. We have, you know, we want to hit them up the middle. We want to hit them, you know, off tackle. We want to hit them outside, and and then we have you know a bunch of things off of that. But uh, but it's something that that's gained uh, momentum as the season's gone on. And then, uh, just one more quickly about Chug. Um, I know he's obviously from New Jersey, and you had some guys who probably were familiar with him when he first came here, Greg, and I think uh, Bob Frazier might have been a QC coach here. Yeah. Did those guys have any input in helping you identify Chug as someone you could bring in here? And yeah, what yeah, about yeah, um, yeah. Coach Frazier, uh, you know, knew of him uh, when he was in New Jersey and, and the whole thing. So that he gave a little bit of a character reference there and gave us some information, which was, you know, kind of allowed us to say, okay, let's let's take this guy in. Uh, I want to ask you about Jonah Jackson. I mean, a year ago he was playing against you guys. Uh, what does he? Uh, meant to the offensive line and uh, the way that that line has come together, how valuable is he? Uh, you know, sometimes I think, I'm not sure, because uh, I don't want to overstate it, because I think what Josh and Wyatt and Thayer and uh, Brandon have done this year has been excellent. Um, and maybe, you know, they'd be playing the same way if Jonah didn't come, but there's just something about Jonah to me that's really helped that group. Um, they brought a certain level of professionalism, they communicate, the way they go about their business, they're fun to be around. I mean, the whole thing. And I think it's a little bit of both. I think they were great for Jonah. I think Ohio State was great for Jonah at the right time. Um, sometimes in those situations, they don't work out great. You know, it's a, you know, a round peg in a square hole. This, this wasn't. This was a great fit, personality-wise, the whole thing. And uh, I think he's had a lot to do with the success of the O-line this year. Um, also, when, when you're looking at film, when you play a game, you score 73 points in had a lot of games that have gotten away from the other team. How are you, what are you looking for to tell you that we took a step forward uh, when a game gets out of hand? Um, what, when you're grading, because you always talk about your you know, tweaking things, but what do you, what will tell you, yes, we're, we're better today than we were last week, other than the score? You know? Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's a, um, you start off the first quarter and you figure out how do we come out of the gates? How prepared were we early in the game? How were we playing when they were fresh, when we were fresh? Uh, what kind of adjustments did we make as we get into the second quarter? And, you know, you, you take a look at third down, red zone, short yardage, and, you know, how are we executing? Uh, is it just a better player making a play against, um, uh, you know, somebody on, on the team that maybe isn't as talented? If that's the case, that, that's, that's not coaching. That's just good recruiting. And, you know, we want to make sure that the execution level and the scheme and all those things are, are at all-time high. And so that, you know, when talent does equate, that we're going to still be able to execute at a high level. And that's the challenge. Ryan, I'm wondering if you heard last week uh, Michigan defensive coordinator Don Brown's comments about the working week by week on Ohio State's offense and that the Ohio State offense better be careful. I'm wondering if you had heard those comments. I didn't. Would you care to respond? No, not really. Um, how often do you guys work on stuff in practice that is designed for later in the season? 
Um, yeah, well, we're always working on our packages to make sure that um, you know, we have wrinkles and there's certain things that never see the field and there's certain things that, that do. You know, some things you come up with a great idea as a coach and you work on it for a couple of weeks and you can't let your ego get in the way. You know, it's a great idea, you like it, and it just, it just doesn't fit right and you have to kind of put it aside. But then there's also things with, you know, you work on, you work on, you get them ready as, as time goes on. And um, so, but that's, that's kind of, uh, you know, something that goes on for, with every program, every kind of offense throughout the season. Zach Harrison and, and Garrett Wilson, I think, were your two highest rated recruits coming in. They've eased in. Are they at the point now where you don't think of them as freshmen? And what can they give you in the home stretch here? Well, they've, they've played a lot of football, and that's just the way the season's played out. So uh, they've made a lot of mistakes, but they've grown from it. So they're, they're, they're ahead of where they would typically be for a freshman. And, uh, and so I think they're both uh, able to make an impact here late in the season. And I don't think anyone's asked you about Rutgers. And obviously, they've had their struggles. Um, What's the challenge of, of a game like this when everyone assumes that this is going to be a blowout? Well, it just goes back to our execution and our discipline and what is our standard. And, um, you know, we certainly have respect for everybody we play. And, you know, I've known Nunzio a long time. He's going he's gonna to do a great job. He's had a week off, and those guys are going to come out and play really, really hard. And so, um, you know, if we're going to take anything for granted, I think we're just going to show up and Piscataway and we're going to win a game. That's not going to happen. So. Uh, we have to do a good job, and those, you know, those guys are going to play really, really hard. So, uh, but at, at the end of the day, the focus is that it comes back to us, and what is our standard? And we have to make sure that we're holding up that standard. And uh, we got a lot at stake here, so uh, we can't, you know, put any of that stuff to risk. And I just that's that's just something that the coaching staff's been hammering home with the players, and to this point, they've respected that, and they have to continue to. Ryan, what's the, kind of the plan for, for Rashad Berry? He kind of played tight end, played defensive end. Chad, is, is he going to go two ways the rest of the season? How do you, how do you kind of do yeah, it? He's very talented, so he has the ability to do both. And, uh, you know, based on the game plan and based on what we're seeing week in and week out, we're going to try to plug him in where we think he can best help, but that could be on either side of the ball. Is that, is that a challenge at all in practice, just in terms of developing a plan for him? Uh, just organizationally, yeah. I mean, you have to make sure you're organized. and. Make sure you're getting the right amount of time and meetings and then individual on the field and then getting the teamwork. And can you kind of give us an update on where, where Gunner is and the development? Obviously, we've seen more of Chugging off kind of as the first guy. Sure. In return with that trip, where's Gunner at? Yeah, I mean, Chris, is, Chris has had two years in a program, so he knows it better than, than, than Gunner does. And uh, But Gunner is is getting better. You know, he's still learning the offense. But but right now, Chris is ahead of, of Gunner. Far right over here. Play. Your players encounter a sudden change on the field. You've had two kind of major sudden changes. Hey, we want you to run the program for the first three games last year. This year with Chase, how does that promote growth as a head coach? Well, There's I no think manual to this thing. That's right. Yeah. No. Um, good question. I think, you know, I think one, one, as a leader, your, your job is to solve problems. And uh, Colin Powell has a great quote about that, you know. And, you know, that's your job. And if, if people stop coming to you with the problems, then, then you're not a very good leader. And that's, that's the job as a head coach is to solve, solve the problems. And that, you know, there's going to be adversity along the way, when, especially you're at a place like this, which is a high-profile place. Things like that are going to come up. And uh, when that happens, we're going to be steady in the boat. We're going to go back to uh, who we are, and it reveals character. And so being strong in there and counting on our leaders and communicating well with the team is all important, and that we're going to get through it in the end no matter what it is. All right, on the recruiting trail, you knew, you kind of knew with Jeff Halfley what he was like as a coach, but obviously he'd been out of the recruiting game for almost a decade. Has he been what you expected or, or more, and how has he helped you kind of reassert the, the footprint in New Jersey with Greg moving on? Yeah, uh, so I remember when we were the 49ers, I, I told Jeff, I said, Jeff, you have an unbelievable combination of recruiting because he was a great recruiter when he was in college and uh, uh, ability to uh, relate to players and then his understanding of defensive football. And I think that's what makes a great college football coach, those three things. If you can relate to players, if you know what you're doing, and you're a really good recruiter, then you can be an all-star. And I think Jeff's an all-star. Um, I thought that when he was um, at, uh, at Rutgers and at Pitt. I felt like that when I worked with him in the NFL, and I, and I certainly feel like that now. And uh, his respect in Jersey and his work in Jersey is, uh, is, gonna, is and is going to pay us dividends in the end. Brian, were you were you the number two quarterback at New Hampshire before you were the starter? Uh, I think I was the third when I was a redshirt sophomore. I was the the third string, and then I became the starter. Yeah. So you never really were in that 
I'm going in the next play if the starter gets hurt. Not really, no. no. Okay. Um, if you had to describe like the perfect backup quarterback, the ideal number two, what, what are the traits that you would look for? Um, I, I mean, everyone's different, so you don't know where they're at in their um, development, you know, if it's a younger guy or an older guy. But you want somebody who's uh, able to execute the offense without getting a lot of reps, physical reps with the first team, and that's, that's hard to do. So uh, I know it sounds funny, but somebody who can play with their imagination, someone who can sit in the back and visualize what's going to happen so that when they do have their opportunity, they're able to play at a high level. And uh, some guys can do that. Other guys struggle with that. Other guys need reps. They're rep guys. Uh, other guys can sit there and kind of sit in meetings and put themselves in a situation, but that that can be exhausting mentally for for somebody. And so, I think that's one of the traits of a backup quarterback that helps them be successful. And to to double back on what you've been asked about a lot, just the idea of a first time head coach. And I know you dealt with some stuff last year, obviously, um, but when things were going so well, you guys are undefeated. You're not even playing into the fourth quarter. Was there a part of you, I don't know if bracing is the right word, but like preparing for like it's not going to be perfect, it's not going to be perfect. And if that chase, if this chase thing is the first sign of that, like did you, how did you prepare yourself for the idea that something was going to come? Well, when I took the job, I mean, I, I knew that that's what this is going to bring. I mean, not, not every day is going to be perfect. You know, we're not going to be undefeated forever. You know, things aren't going to be perfect all the time. That's part of being uh, the head football coach at a big-time program and being at Ohio State. I mean, we know that. And um, that's part of the job, and that's a big part of the job. And uh, you know, talk to my family, talk to, to Nina about that at length. Is that there's going to be some days that are, are better than others, but at the end of the day, we're going to do things the right way. We're going to recruit great people, and when things get rough, we're just going to rely on each other, and it's going to come back to our character. And that in the end, adversity reveals character. And so, as long as we're strong, great things are going to happen, and we can get through anything together. And so, um, so that's what's going to happen. And um, you know, I know that things are going to come up along the way, but we'll be strong in there, steady in the boat, and we work through it together. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.